Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. You'll see many presentations around what to do in Hajj and we've started doing some uh, video clips on how to maintain good health in Hajj. But one of the things that I found quite confusing when I first went to do Hajj many years ago was what do I take in my toiletry bag? What I, the mistake I made was I took large volumes of a lot of toiletries and I found out when I got there that I didn't use everything, so I had to carry the weight out. And those things that I didn't use, I carried them back. And therefore, I had this weight to carry there and back, which was wasted. So what I'm doing here is going to show you what I'm going to take, inshallah, for this year's Hajj. And you may get some inspiration or guidance from the things I'll be taking, if you've not been before, to ensure that your toiletry bag and the volume in your suitcase isn't preoccupied with loads of toiletries that you may never get around to using. One of the things I will say before we start is make sure that you check the product you take. Throughout most of your uh, visit to uh, Mecca and Medina Sharif, it shouldn't be a problem what you use, but for the days of Hajj, it's very important that you use products that are not scented. Now, be careful and some of my colleagues have made this mistake in the past. When looking at the contents of a product, they may say there is no uh, perfume, but that is not the same as there is no fragrance. Because there are products that have things like cucumber extract, which do give a scent to the product, but it's a natural scent of the cucumber it's not an artificial scent, and that is what the product is implying, that there's no artificial scent in there. Now, most of you will probably realize that during the days of Hajj, using scented products is uh, forbidden, and therefore, look at the product and make sure that it says 0% fragrance, and I'll show you some of the products that I've purchased that, inshallah, I'll be taking with me. So let's start from the beginning. The first product I want to share is my toothbrush. Now I tend to treat myself when I do go for Hajj and buy myself a new toothbrush. Um, it does mean that my everyday toothbrush uh, I can leave here and I don't have to take the charger with it. But this is quite convenient because it already has a battery built into it. So I get the benefits of an electric toothbrush without having to take the charger. Now with it, I've also got the toothpaste. Now you don't need a big toothpaste and remember this will be scented and it will have a strong taste as well so many of the imams may imply that you cannot use this during the days of hajj when you are in the state of ihram but outside your period of being in the state of ihram you should be able to use toothpaste now when you go to uh, saudi arabia uh, in Makkah and medina you will come across plenty of these now this is a miswak it's very easily available and very cheap, and you can get fresh miswak while you're out there in Saudi Arabia, and you can use this during the days of Hajj when you are in a state of ihram. So it's a good substitute for the traditional toothpaste and toothbrush, and if you can't get one here, my advice would be actually buy one when you're out in Saudi Arabia. They're likely to be fresher, and I suspect that is where most of the miswak come from that we buy in this country. If you want to try and keep your miswak clean, you can also get these type where there is a miswak inside a plastic container, which is like a pencil case, so that you can use your miswak and um, keep it clean and hygienic in the actual plastic container. So you can take either one, but as I say, you'll get plenty of these out there in Saudi Arabia. So um, I wouldn't burden yourself uh, trying to find them here if they're not easily freely available. To finish off mouth hygiene, it's always useful to take a little bottle of mouthwash. Now this one does say it's alcohol free, uh, but it has got a fresh mint flavour, which should be quite nice as a mouthwash, but remember with it having a mint flavour, it's not permitted in the data, in the days of Ihram, in the state of Ihram. 
Um, but um, during the heat, uh, which could get up to 50, 55 degrees Celsius, as you're getting dehydrated and your mouth is dry, there may be bad odors that start developing in your mouth. And therefore, brushing your teeth, using a miswak and using mouthwash are all admirable, uh, preferable things to do to ensure that your fellow colleagues or the hujaj are not offended by the smell of your uh, mouth order. Moving on to shower gels, the one I'm taking this year is a Sanex product. Um, by the way, we've not been sponsored for any of these products that I'm going to show you today. This one says it's 0%, but it actually says on there that it's got 0% fragrance, 0% colorants, and 0% soap. So for me, that is suitable, as it says 0% fragrance, that it should be fragrance free. And up here, it ha does have a little sticker, which confirms that it has 0% perfume and 0% fragrance. So this should be suitable throughout my journey, including the days of Ihram, uh, the days of uh, state of Ihram when I'm in Mina. When using the showers in Mina, you will need something like this to take uh, with you to take the sweat and the grime off your body. Um, and I would suggest something I've done in the past is to take a product like this plus a scented product to use in Makkah and Medina. What I've tended to find is that I never get through a whole bottle of this just in the few days that I'm in Mina. And therefore, a bottle like this, which is 250 mils, should, inshallah, carry me right the way through the journey, meaning I don't have to bring any of it back with me. Now, moving on, you will be getting quite grimy, sweaty, and your face will get quite oily and moist. And there is a product here that I've purchased, which is uh, called Morning Energy Skin, Energi Skin Energizing Daily Facial Scrub. It's oil-free, but it does have tangerine extract in it, which does mean, again, state of uh, ihram is uh, out of the question. But for the other days, I can use this and make sure that I get uh, all the grime and oil off my um, face. As well as that, I have a moisturizing cream. Now, the one I've gone for is a simple product, and it does say that it's um, got SP30 in. Now, clearly, when we're going to be in an environment which could go up to 50, 55 degrees, um, you do need that sun protection. And it's, um, it's advisable to have something with a high SP factor as a moisturizer for your face. Um, it does have uh, no artificial perfume or colors in this one. So, uh, inshallah, I should be okay with this. Now, alongside that, what I've bought is a lip balm because your mouth will get dry, but your lips will also get dry as well. And this one that I've got is a Sun Protect Nivea one. Again, this has got an SP30 on it, which means that inshallah, I won't come back with uh, burnt lips and it should keep my lips uh, hydrated uh, during the day. And with it having natural oils, it should hopefully um, keep me well hydrated around the uh, mouth region. So again, another SP30 product to go along with the facial moisturizer. For personal order, there is a simple product uh, which has got 0% alcohol um, and 0% artificial perfume. Again, be careful because it may have other natural scents in. So you may be able to use this uh, outside the state of Ihram. But again, with the temperatures you're gonna be facing, I suspect your armpits are going to be uh, sweating profusely and you may need a bit of support to try and keep that order down. And as you will be exposed to the sun, um, although this is more traditional for when we go on sunny holidays, I think we need to start taking some uh, protection as the days of Hajj get hotter and hotter. And this is a water-resistant sunblocker, which has actually SP50 in it, which is one of the highest SP factors that you can get. It has no reference to anything about scent, but I will exercise some caution to make sure that I don't end up using it while I'm in a state of Ihram. But outside the state of Ihram, I'll be using this uh, frequently 
to make sure that arms and other parts that are exposed uh, don't get sunburned. One of the things to be careful of is that when you've got such high temperatures, prickly heat, which is a red itchy rash that can develop, can be quite troublesome. And if you should develop prickly heat because you were exposed, then use something like antihistamines and a mild steroid cream like hydrocortisone to calm it down. But be aware, take protection, because reoccurring episodes of prickly heat can eventually lead to skin cancer, because every time you get prickly heat, you're actually damaging your skin. So that's some of the products. Now, some of the other things I'm planning to take, I've got a small bottle of hand gel. Um, clearly, we're going to be out there doing clinics and um, it's um, advisable for us when we're examining somebody to clean our hands with something that is antibacterial so that we're not transmitting infection from one who judge to another. And this is quite a nice little convenient bottle that will fit into uh, one of my little uh, man bags that I'll be able to carry around and use, at, use as and when I need it. Again, it's got a floral, fruity smell, so I won't be using that during uh, the state of Ehram, but I will be carrying it around clinic at all other times. Now, during your journey, you may find that while you're walking to Mecca, while you're walking to Jamarat, while you're walking to other venues, you don't always have easy access to water, and you may get sweaty, clammy, oily skin. And one of the things that I find quite useful is some of these uh, facial wipes, which can quite easily fit into a handbag. And these are moisturizing. They have no artificial perfume or colors, no harsh chemicals. And um, we need to just check that there's no perfume in there, no natural perfumes. But they should be quite a good uh, ally in trying to keep our face oils uh, to a minimum so we don't get too greasy and clammy. So again, got some face wipes to take with me. Now, these next two products are quite important and they will keep your ailments and uh, discomfort to a minimum. The first is good old Vaseline. Now, you don't need a one kilo bottle and since where you will be applying this is quite an intimate area, and therefore, none of the other colleagues, none of the other hujaj are going to want to share the same bottle as you. I would suggest that you only buy a small bottle for personal use. This is a small 50 millimeter bottle. And inshallah, this will be more than adequate for me and my journey. Now, for those of you who haven't worked out where you use the Vaseline, when we're walking long distances, what you'll find is the inside of your thighs will rub like this. And if your thighs are dry, what you will notice soon after is that the skin on the inside of your upper thigh will start becoming red and raw. Once that happens, you're going to have discomfort many days, for many days, if not many weeks, and you'll end up walking with your legs apart to try and keep the two thighs apart, making you look like you're doing a John Wayne walk. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. And the way to remedy this and avoid it is apply a thin layer of this Vaseline. You don't have to put loads of it on, just a thin layer on the inside on the days that you're going to be doing long walks. And that may even be days when you're doing tawafs and say because in itself, you could be walking three to four miles by the time you've completed your, completed your tawaf and your say. So that's Vaseline, small tub, only 50 mils per person. Don't share it because you'll carry the old cross infect people and it's not hygienic. The second product is a little bottle of talc powder. Now for the days that you're not using the Vaseline, I would suggest that you use talc powder. Mainly for men, what I would suggest is that you wash the groin creases and apply some talc powder to keep that area dry. Now for women and brothers with large man boobs, you may want to put it under your chest, under your breast as well, because anywhere you've got two flaps of skin coming together will create a warm, moist environment. And during the day, that warm, moist environment will be a good medium, a good environment for fungal infections to grow. So in your groin creases, 
And for those of you that need it under your breast, you can use it there as well. But don't mix this with the Vaseline or you'll make a real mess. So the days you're using Vaseline, don't use this, but you can use it again under your breast area. But the days you're not using Vaseline, you can also use this in your groin creases. So that's talc powder and that's Vaseline. If you're not gonna take much more, make sure you take these two. Now, the other products I've got are um, more optional extras, shall we say. The first one is this little bottle I've got here, which is beard oil. Now for the brothers out there, you'll have spent years, alhamdulillah, mashallah, you know, getting your beards to a, a hundred percent, uh, you know, clean, nicely straight, well moisturized standard. And you may find that three weeks of not looking after your beard may end up making the hair um, sizzle and curl up. So not that you have to take it, but I prefer to take this little bottle of beard oil, which again, because it's got scent in, I won't be using during the days of Ihram, uh, state of Ihram. But on the other days, I'll be putting some of that beard oil through my beard just to keep it moisturized and soft. And so that I bring it back in a, as good a condition as when I took it for Hajj. The second product, which will help the face, is a little bottle of vitamin E that I picked up at Body Shop. Now it's an overnight serum, um, it is an oil, it has got uh, fragrance in it, so again, state of Ihram, no, no. But during the day, you will get plenty of sun for your skin, which will be beneficial, but make sure you don't burn yourself. But at night, applying a few drops of this into the palm of your hands, rub the palms together and then put it all over your face and let it soak in overnight, will moisturize the skin, refuel the skin, and provide it some nutrients to keep your face skin nice and healthy. Not expensive, from Body Shop. Um, optional extra, you don't have to have it, but I think it helps when you wake up in the morning and you've got refreshed skin. Um, just makes the day go a lot easier. Now, looking at one of the other products that I'm putting in my toiletry bag, is this little bottle of glucose tablets. These are tangy, uh, tangy orange ones. Most of you'll know other glucose tablets like Lucozade or Dextrose. One of the things I would say is don't get too dependent on these. These are good to elevate, raise your sugar levels very quickly, but once they raise, they will drop very quickly as well. For days where you are going to be doing long distance walking, I would suggest things that have very starchy products that release sugars slowly. Things like bread, pasta, potato. Carry with you a banana or an apple for that additional sugar boost should you need it. But if you're walking from Mina to Mecca or going to Jamarat and back and it's very uh, hot and you feel that you just need that extra boost of energy and remember, be careful if you're diabetic because this is sugar tablets that will skyrocket your sugars very high. So be very careful. But for those of you who are not diabetic, if you need a sugar tablet, then this might just give you that little boost that you need to get you to the end of your journey. Lucas Air Dextrose you can buy. They come in uh, little packets. The problem I find is that once you've opened the packets, you can't control the other tablets because there's no lid once you've ripped the opening. Whereas I prefer this one, which comes in a little plastic tube, which um, once you've used the first tablet and there's 10 in a pack, you can then put the lid back on and put it back in your bag. So that's little glucose tablets. But as I say, this is not for everyday use. This is for emergencies. When your sugar levels are dropping, you're getting lightheaded, you're getting tired, you're getting weak, and you just need that sugar boost to get you to the end of your journey. As well as that, in my toiletry bag, and it is a big toiletry bag, I'll be having my water bottle next to it to make sure that any stage of the journey, whether it's Mecca, Medina, Mina, Days of Arafah, Muzdalifah, wherever I'm going, inshallah, I'll have this topped up. And the idea is that when you drink, make sure it's the Sunnah way. Take a small sip, move it away, swallow, but don't breathe into the bottle itself. 
It is better for you to take little small sips and swallow it rather than gulp water because gulping water will just make it go straight through the stomach. Whereas taking little sips on a regular basis will help you rehydrate a lot better. So I've shown you most of the products I'm going to take in my toiletry bag. One last thing I did mention on the good foot hygiene video was that for those who are going to wear socks when you're not in a state of Ehram, but you're walking long distances, I did suggest that cotton is better than nylon, but merino wool is better than cotton. Merino wool will moisturize, will keep your leg feet in the right climate and right temperature, and they stop your feet getting sweaty and clammy. Well, I have found a pack of three extra fine merino blend socks at Marks and Spencers. I did say they might be a bit expensive on the uh, foot hygiene video, but relatively speaking, £15 for three socks. That should be enough for me for a three week journey to Saudi Arabia to keep my feet uh, blister free, inshallah. And remember, as long as I wash my feet, moisturize my feet, not in between the toes, and keep them dry and wear these socks with my trainers, I should, inshallah, enjoy a blister free trauma-free hajj and come back with both my fees, feet intact. So I hope you found that useful. I've shown you an idea of what I'm going to take. Try and keep the bottles to a smaller size. If you're going in a group, you may find that you want to take one bigger bottle, like shower gels and things that you can share between you. Um, toothpaste, again, you could share. Toothbrushes will be an individual matter. Your Vaseline bottles an individual matter. But work out, do you need your own products? Or will you be staying in a room with other hujaj where you'll be sharing products? Try and minimize what you're taking because there's no point taking a lot of toiletries out only to find you bringing them all back again and uh, having to carry that extra baggage. Inshallah, we'll be in touch with uh, other videos in the near future. But if you've not signed up to uh, Facebook with the British Hajj Legation, do so. And Inshallah, we'll be on Instagram as well. So keep in touch and we'll keep the information coming to you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.